is raging. What's your team name? Scarlet Need to be boys, girls, right down the middle here. Grab a seat, grab a seat. You can sit in it. You don't have to just grab it. You can sit in your seat. That's totally acceptable. Are you surviving? No, that's not good. Chuck's surviving. He, we got a thumbs up from Chuck. Everybody grab a seat. Got plenty of room still. All right. A little fun tradition we have here at the NYC. We're going to show you a team vlog. Do you like team vlogs? All right. I give to you the red team. What is this music? Let's try that again. It is camp after all. There's our first. Let's try this. Are you ready for the red team? Yeah. OK, let's try it now. Second album. Yeah. 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 I know, 
I know where the best showers are and I'm not telling anybody! What are you most excited about here at camp? Nothing! Yay! Yay! Let's hear it for the red team. All right. Y'all ready for church tonight? Amen. You ready to worship the Lord tonight? Amen. Listen, God did something great today. It was hot this morning. Anyone notice it didn't rain, but the temperature went down? When, when does that happen? That's my God. Amen. It feels good in here tonight. God is good. Say, God is good. Amen. Can I have Brother Mike Spencer? Where are you, Mike? Mike, he gone. All right, moving right along. We're going to have Brother Paul Moore. Come on up and say a prayer for us. Just start the service in prayer for us. And uh, Brother Paul Moore from Rosedale. All right, let's bow our heads. We'll go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the day that you've given us, Lord, uh, the time of fellowship, Lord, that we've had for the food that we've had. Uh, Lord, we've gathered into your house now to worship you. Lord, let us shift our mind and our heart and focus on you tonight. Lord, we know that right now there are people here that need you. Lord, they're facing trouble. They're facing trials. Whatever may be going on in their lives, Lord, they're young, they're old, doesn't matter. Lord, we know you can meet their needs because you're a great God. Lord, we know that you can reach down and touch them. Lord, most especially, we know there's young people here, Lord, that need you in their life. Lord, they're lost without Jesus. And I'm just praying tonight, Lord, they'll come to you. Lord, we pray you'll reach your hand down. Bless the singing. Bless Brother Mark as he preaches tonight. Lord, I just pray that you'll just lift him up. We ask all of these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 All right, have our band come on up. Didn't have a chance to have music class today because we shoved so much in today, but we're going to sing our theme song for the week. So if y'all stand with us, we'll learn it together right here in church. I'm so filled with fear, I can barely move. Down, I've had my share of down, but never more than right now. I'm wondering where are you here on the edge of. But somehow your promises find my troubled heart. This is the truth I'm standing on. Even when all my strength is gone, you are faithful forever. And I know you'll never let me fall. Your plan was perfect all along. This is the truth I'm standing on. Good. I believe you're still good. Even when life's not good, I will. the seas he 
promises he's gonna make a way for me. This is the truth I'm standing on, even when all my strength is gone. You are faithful forever, and I know you'll never let me Your plan was perfect all along. This is the truth I'm standing on. Listen why. My rock, my shield, my firm foundation. I know I will not be shaken. You truth I'm standing on, even when all my strength is gone. You are faithful forever, and I know you'll never let me fall. Right now I'm choosing to believe, someday soon I'll look back and see all the pain had a purpose. Your plan was perfect all along. This is the truth I'm standing on. Amen. Aren't you grateful to have that truth that we can stand and be established and firm and bound to? He is enough. Stand in Jesus. Stand in Jesus. Stand in Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you want to. My favorite parts of camp is worship. Amen. Getting to come in and we start singing the songs. You've seen you guys all start singing and then the hands start being raised. Right. Worshiping the same God I serve. How awesome is that? And this is, I have been so excited and looking forward to seeing all you guys. And I just can't wait for the rest of the week. See, sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now, I'm losing back. I've stood on this stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be all right. But right now, It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down. But what will I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? I know you're able and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand. But To move a mountain, 
a good thing. A little faith is all I have right now. But God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable, oh, give me the strength to be able to sing. It is a way. Jesus, I will cling to you. Lord, come what may, for I know you're able. Oh, I know you can. I know you're able, and I know you can. Save through the fire with your mighty hand. But he My hope is you alone. I know the sorrow and I know the hurt. It would all go away if you just say the word. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. It is well with my soul. I felt you live my shame and I made a vow that day that I'd spend the rest of my life loving my Jesus Do you love him tonight? Showing my scars thing this lost world needs 
is someone I'm trying to be. The truth that has set me free is that I'm just a broken man. Loving my Jesus, showing my scars, telling my story of how mercy can reach you where you and I pray the whole world hears the cry of my heart to see the ones I love, loving my Jesus. And when all is said and done, when my last song's been sung, when I stand face to face with the one who gave all just for me, may all I have to show be all the best. Loving my Jesus, showing my scars, telling my story of how mercy can reach you where you are. And I pray the whole world hears the cry of my heart. Listen, if Josh Sorrell goes to his cabin tonight and he never wakes up another day on this earth, may you know that he went out singing, and may you know he went out praising, and may you know he went out making the name of Jesus above every name. My legacy, only Jesus. Amen. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Let that be my only legacy. If you don't know my name, if you don't know my ministry, if you know nothing about me, just know my Jesus tonight. It is all for him.
There are days I've taken more than I can give. There are choices that I've made that I wouldn't make again. Had my share of laughter, of tears and troubled times. This has been the story of my life. I have won and I have lost. I got it right sometimes, but sometimes I did not. Life's been a journey, I've seen joy, I've seen regret. came down on me and I was blinded by my fears and I struggled to believe but in those unclear moments you were the one keeping me strong this is how my story's always gone I have won and I have lost got it right sometimes, but sometimes I did not. Life's been a journey, I've seen joy, I've seen regret. Oh, and you have been my God through all of this. And this is who you are, more constant than the stars up in the sky. All these years of our lives, I listen. I look back and I see you. Right now, I still do, and I'm always going to. Always. I have won and I have lost. I got it right sometimes, but sometimes I did not. Life's been a journey, I've seen joy, I've seen regret. Oh, and you have been my God through all of it. Oh, and you have been my God through all of it. And you have been my God through all of it. Amen. Time for some preaching. Amen. I, I agree with Brother Jeremy. There is, a, uh, there is a sweet spirit here. And if you're where you need to be, this is a lot of fun. If you're not saved, if you've got some problems in your life, it's kind of uncomfortable. I have people tell me all the time, I don't like coming to church because it makes me feel uncomfortable. Well, there's a fix for that. There, there's a fix for that. Then you can then you can enjoy it, amen. And uh, our our uh, desire is this week: whether you're an adult, whether you're young, whether you're a sinner, whether you just got some problems and some burdens, is for everyone to leave here with victory this week, amen. Leave changed and not leave like you come. Brother Mark's going to come and preach for us and going to give you the word of God. And the worship has been phenomenal. The Word of God will speak to your heart. If you will respond tonight, you can enjoy the rest of the week. Amen? Amen. Come on, brother, preach for us, Mark. I want you to open your Bibles with us tonight. The book of Acts, chapter number 27. You, I don't want you to stand, so I'm sorry. I, I want to do something that God has put on my heart. <clears throat> what, a, what a sweet spirit. <laughs> Whew. 
There's nothing better than being in God's presence. <laughs> Can you feel God tonight? I don't serve God because I can feel him. But I'm sure glad I can. I want to preach a message to you tonight with God being our helper. You all remember the theme of this week? Unmovable. Unmovable. And I struggled with what I was going to preach. But I've come to a conclusion that God... From what I saw today, there has been a lot of different things occurring. I've seen some people wanting to get close to God, but I also seen some things that maybe wasn't real pleasing to God. Maybe some things were said or maybe some actions that were done. And I thought to myself as I listened and heard, well, what is actually going on? And you know what, I, what I've come to the conclusion is the devil's wanting to tear apart what God's wanting to build up. The devil's wanting you to basically not trust God. Let me ask you a question tonight. How is your faith? How is your faith tonight? You know, the Bible says it's impossible to please God except you have faith. Now, he didn't put an age limit on that. I've seen people get saved at 90-some years, old as, as early as four years old. I can tell you this, if you don't know the Lord, it would be a great night for you to come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You see, that's why we're here. Can I tell you, there's a lot of things that's going to happen in life that will cause you to be movable. But God wants you to be unmovable. In chapter number 27, we read about a man by the name of Paul. The Apostle Paul was a man that actually, his name was Saul before it became Paul, before God transformed him and changed his name. Saul was actually one that went around and persecuted the church. He hated the church. He hated Christians. He hated being around Christians. Now, see, some of you here tonight, maybe you come because you really wanted to get closer to God. Some of you come because you were invited to come, and some of you probably don't even want to be here tonight. But can I tell you that you're not here by coincidence? God saw 2,000 years ago on this very day that you would be in this very place. That's because that's who God is. And the God that I serve, listen to me, my God is unmovable. And see, tonight, you are movable. That's why you need to get to a God that is unmovable that will make you unmovable. You see, the Apostle Paul found out the hard way. The Apostle Paul, we read about this man. I ask you how your faith was. The Bible says and teaches us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God wants to reward you tonight if you will seek him. How many of you have problems? How many of you have struggles? How many of you hate school? How many of you hate work? Too bad. You got to go to school and you got to work. Amen? But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Paul found out the hard way. When Paul finally come to know Jesus Christ as his personal Savior, can I tell you the problems begin to reign in Paul's life? Can I tell you that if anybody tells you that when you accept Christ that it's going to be easy, listen to my friend, run as far away from them as you can. Because the battle just begins. But can I tell you this? If you'll get close to God, God will get close to you. If you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. And can I tell you this? God will take you up in his arms. He'll love on you. He'll protect you. He'll be with you. Hey, can somebody shout tonight? You have to determine in your heart that you want to be unmovable. And you can do that with God's help. The Apostle Paul found himself in a city, a well-known city, town called Jerusalem. 
And you know what Paul was doing? He was just basically preaching Jesus Christ. He was telling people how good that God was. Hey, have I told you how good God is? Have you learned about him today? Paul was there and he began to think and he began to talk and he began to express the word of God and begin to preach the word of God to people. But then you had some people that was upset. And they took Paul and they put Paul in jail. They put him in prison and then he stood trial. The Bible teaches us from the, uh, the 21st chapter all the way over to the 27th chapter. He's been put in prison. He goes on trial. He shares his gospel or God's gospel with other people. He stands counsel. Now notice this. The Jews, the very people that he was preaching to and trying to help, wanted to kill him. They conspired to take his life. All because he mentioned the name of Jesus. He stands trial before this man named Caesarea. He then goes to the governor named Felix. He gives his account to them. And then he comes to a man by the name of Agrippa. He's the king. He begins to share how good that God was and how good that God has been to him. And he convinced King Agrippa that he needed to give his heart to Jesus. But then King Agrippa said almost... Thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Can I tell you, you'll never read in the Bible anywhere whatever happened to King Agrippa. Can I tell you this? If King Agrippa left this life without accepting Jesus Christ, he heard these words, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. So Paul stands before all of these people. He's a citizen of Rome. He then... After going to King Agrippa, they put him on a ship and they send him to Rome. Now on this ship is about 276 prisoners. Paul just was preaching the gospel, but now he is in the midst of a bunch of prisoners, murderers, hard criminals. But that's not all. On the way to Rome, the Apostle Paul finds himself in a ship and then a hurricane comes. For 14 days, Paul is on this ship wondering if he's going to make it to Rome. Oh, but then God speaks to him. And he assures him that because he was put on the ship and he was headed to Rome, that he would safely make it there. But can I tell you this? On the way, God told him he would get there, but God also showed him that there would be problems along the way. The Apostle Paul about the 14th day during this hurricane, they finally come to themselves. They have fasted. They now eat. They toss everything off the ship, which brings us to chapter 27 in the book of Acts. The Bible says this in verse number 40. If you're there, say amen. The Bible says, And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves into the sea and loosed the rudder bands, and hoist up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground and of the, forefoot, the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable. What's our theme? It remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves and the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. Now notice this. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. I want to ask you a question. I asked you how your faith was, but how do you remain unmovable in the midst of life? How do you remain unmovable when the storms of life come past you? How do you remain unmovable when it seems as if everybody that you come in contact with dislikes you? How do you remain unmovable when you want to stand for God, but everybody else around you wants nothing to do with God? Can I tell you, you are living in a world where people do not want anything to do with God. 
God has been taken out of our government. God has been taken out of our schools. And the sad part, God has been taken out of our homes. But Paul told them, because he had heard from God, except ye abide in the ship. Can I tell you something? If you want to make heaven your home, you've got to abide in the ship. Because there is a captain, a captain of the Lord's host, whose name is Jesus and can I tell you, the old ship is battered. It's been worn. Can I tell you, it's been through the storms of life. But my friend, if you'll abide in the ship one day, you will make it home. You see, that's God's promise. How do you remain unmovable? There's three things that I want to quickly share with you of chapter 27, starting at verse 40. The Bible says, And when they had taken up the anchors, the next three words... They committed themselves. <clears throat> they committed themselves. Notice this. You think you're going to get to heaven because you go to a church? You're mistaken. You think you're going to get to heaven because you come to youth camp? You're mistaken. You think you're going to get to heaven because you pay your tithes? My friend, you are mistaken. The only way that you'll get to heaven is the way that Jesus said. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 3, 16, you heard it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, you have to commit yourself. These men were in a hurricane on a ship, 200, and notice this was not, not some uh, princess cruise line. They're on a boat with a hurricane coming. Shoulder to shoulder, about like you are tonight. I, I'd say there's probably 276, if not 300 here tonight. And they're on this ship. And the winds come, the rain comes, the storm comes. For 14 days, they never saw daylight, wondering if they were going to make it. But God came to them, just as God is coming to you tonight. Given hope. Can I tell you, there's hope for you tonight. If you will commit yourself to Jesus Christ. You see, they committed themselves. They had a goal. You know what their goal was? They wanted to get to land. By a show of hands, how many of you want to go to heaven? <laughs> Can I tell you, if you get there, you have to go one way. And that's God's way. But they committed themselves. I'm 52 years old. Is that old to some of you? Don't say yes, please. For 28 years, I have committed myself to Jesus Christ. Has it been easy? Absolutely not. Has it been hard? You better believe it. Hey, pastor, did you want to give up? Absolutely. But can I tell you the times when it got rough that I didn't want to go on, that I got discouraged? Listen, can I tell you that God passed by my way and he gave me sweet peace. He gave me victory. He reminded me of where I'm going. Because I committed myself to him. You can be unmovable, but you have to commit yourself. This is not a fake religion. This is a pure and undefiled religion. Can I tell you the God that I serve is not dead. He is alive tonight. They committed themselves. Notice and when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoist up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore. You know what they did? They just took up the sails. They held on to the side of the ship and they said, God, I'm going to trust you. You see, that's what you got to do. You've got to trust Jesus tonight. Are you waiting for a lightning bolt? It's not going to happen. You're waiting for a clap of thunder? It could, but that's not why how you get saved. It's by faith that you get saved. They committed themselves unto the Lord. Can I ask you, have you committed yourself to Jesus Christ? 
You need to commit yourself tonight, not tomorrow. Now's the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 13, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Kids, listen to me. Life is filled with storms. Life is filled with disappointments. Life is filled with things that you don't want to go to and go through. Life is filled with events in your life that you never thought you would ever go through. But can I tell you, if you'll commit yourself to Jesus Christ, I promise you, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you always, even until the end of the world. You have to commit yourself. Be unmovable tonight by committing yourself to Jesus. You see, this isn't popular preaching in most churches. Did you know that? But can I remind you, Jesus wasn't popular either. He died for you. He that knew no sin became sin so you could go to heaven. We need to commit ourselves. The second thing comes from verse number 43. Not only do we must commit ourselves to Christ, but I want you to notice in verse 43, but the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and go to land. Not only should you commit yourself, but there's times in life while on the ship the things are going to happen in life. Look up here. You're just going to have to swim. <laughs> You're going to have to swim. We, you, you see, preacher, you said to stay in the ship. I understand that. But this ship here, they had gave themselves and committed themselves to land. And when they got there, it stuck in the land. And when they got there, the Bible says the wave began to come against the boat and the boat began to break apart. 276 soldiers or, or prisoners was there that night and they become fearful for their life. So the easiest thing to do was to kill all of them. But remember, Paul said, if we abide in the ship, there will not be one loss of life. But now they have come to land. The, the boat begins to break apart. And now they said, if you can swim, get in the water and swim to shore. I'm getting somewhere. Not only do you commit yourself, but there's times in life you're going to go through things that you don't understand. That you're just going to have to tread water and swim. You're going to have to trust God. I don't know the outcome. I don't know what you're going to go through, but I can tell you I know the one that if you'll hold on to and trust in, he'll get you to shore. Life around us sometimes crumbles. Sometimes you got to just jump in and swim. The waves beat the ship. It was swim or die for these prisoners. It was swim or die for Paul. The chances of survival were slim to none. But remember, God has the last say. You see, they thought that life was going to be taken. But Paul got confirmation. If you'll abide in the ship, we'll all get there safely. And if you'll remember at the end of verse 44, the Bible says they that they escaped all safe to land. You want to know why? Because first of all, they committed themselves. Second of all, they began to swim and they made it to shore. You've got to trust God. The Bible says in Psalms 30, chapter 5, for his anger endureth but for a moment. His favor is his life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hey, listen to me, adults, young people. You look up here. Life becomes unbearable sometimes. People say this and they make this statement, God will never put on more than you can bear. You ever been diagnosed with cancer? That can become unbearable. 
You ever suffered a loss of a sibling or a child? That can become unbearable. In February of this year, I was told that I probably got leukemia, Hodgkin's lymphoma, or something to that effect. This was in February. From February to this day, I was told, I wondered and worried, but there come a point in my walk with God, I had to say, God, you're in control of everything. God, I trust you. God, whatever it is that you want, God, I'm willing to go through it. To see souls saved, to see my family saved, Brother Isaiah, to see the church grow, to see, listen, God do a great work. I said, God, whatever it is, I'll go through it. Because, God, I trust you. And it was at that time in my life I needed to learn how to swim. You see, some people don't know how to swim. But sometimes in life you learn to swim, even if it's just treading water. From February to this day today, I found out this morning at noon that what I have is something simple that the doctors can take care of. Hey, can I tell you my God is able? Can I tell you my God cares? Can I tell you my God is here for you today? Can I tell you my God, if he cares for me, oh, he cares for you. The Bible says not one sparrow falls from the sky that God doesn't know about. Oh, can I tell you, God loves you tonight. Sometimes you just got to tread water and swim. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding but acknowledge him hey, hey, in all of his ways and he said if you'll do that that he will direct your paths you know I could be preaching tonight knowing that I've got cancer and got days or months to live but that doesn't change the message <laughs> God's still good God's still the same God Oh, but preacher, you don't understand the life that I live when I go home and what I've got to go through. I don't, but God does. And if God does, he can care for you. He can love on you. He can give you peace. He can protect you because that's who God is. You have to be unmovable. My third point in closing, not only must you commit yourself, sometimes you got to swim. Preacher, what happens if I don't know how to swim? Well, notice with me at verse 44. Let me go back to verse 43. He said, But the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest. You say, Preacher, I can't swim. Well, this is for you. And the rest. <laughs> and the rest. Some on boards. You got to get this. If you can't swim, this is for you. If you've not committed, this is for you. He says, and some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Can I tell you, if you've not committed and you cannot swim, will you just grab hold of some broken pieces in your life and grab hold of them? Maybe somebody that's broken life, they know Jesus, get a hold of them and say, would you help me get to heaven? You see, this message applies for all. See, you may have committed. You may be enduring. Some of you may be swimming tonight. And you know what? It may seem as if you're drowning. Can I tell you? Just grab hold of something. <laughs> Pastor Gary, would you come up here? Sister Renee, would you come here? Wherever you are. Be patient with me, okay? All that was left couldn't swim. So they grabbed hold of anything. I want you to notice 
that God always makes good on his promise. Paul told them that if they'll abide in the ship, that there'll be no loss of life. When they finally committed themselves to land, the ship hit ground. It began to break apart. Some began to jump out and swim. Some on broken pieces. But let me remind you that they escaped all safe to land. Paul Moore and Don Moore, would you make your way up here? Could you just separate yourself? Would you, would you agree with me, Pastor Gary, that Renee is your best friend? Sister Renee, would you agree that Pastor Gary is your best friend? Can I ask you something? Do you think I could push you over? Do you think I could push you over? Don, I know I could push you over. Come over here, Don. I, I want you two to lock arms there because you like each other and you're friends. Paul, you stand behind your wife. Now, don't let her fall. Okay. I want you to, you, you, would you, you think you're friends with her? Okay, would you lock her? Is she your best friend? If not, I'm sure Brother Gary would be your friend. Madeline McDonald, would you come up here? I know I can push you over. But I want you to just grab hold of Pastor Gary's arm there. And could you have your best friend come up here? Huh? What, what, what will you holler for? Her? <laughs> Do anybody else have friends here tonight? You got friends? You got a ton of them. I'm talking best friends. I'm talking about friends that will be with you regardless. Michaela, will you come up here? Trisha, will you come up here? Now, you all agree that I could probably individually push all of these guys over. Hmm? Don't make me. I, I want you to just lock arms here. Now, see, there's no folks up here related other than the, the spouses, daughter and mother and daughter and mother. But these two don't know these two other than friendship. They're not related. These two aren't related to these three, two, nor are these two related. To, none of these are related, but they're friends. And you know what they're going to do? In life, they're going to help each other. You see, I can push one around if I wanted to. Now, Paul would probably give me a fight, but I think I can still take him. <laughs> At least that's what his brother Rich said. <laughs> Have any of you ever heard of redwood trees? These redwood trees are out on the West Coast. They're the tallest in America. And when you go to them... You, you look up and they say the average height of a redwood tree is 240 feet. 240 feet. And the circumference is between 10 and 17 feet. It, they say it would take 17 normal people to grab hands and get and make a circle around this tree. But here's the ironic part about those trees. You never see those trees blow over. But here's the ironic part about these trees. Did you know that their roots, as tall as these trees are, 240 feet, did you know that their roots only go between 6 and 10 foot deep? Preacher, that's impossible. A, a tree that stands 240 feet, but it never blows over, and their roots only go between 6, 10, maybe 15 foot deep, how does that work? Their roots don't go down. Their roots go out. And their roots go out and they find the next redwood tree. <laughs> and they interlock. And you know what? They can push and the winds may make them sway. But can I tell you, when they interlock, they'll never fall down. 
You see, that's what you've got here tonight. You've got friends. You've got people that love you. You've got Christians. You've got preachers. You've got people that care for you tonight and they want you to be saved. You see, this is a family. They are not related. But in Christ, we've been adopted into the family of God. So you know what we can call ourselves? Just call us big redwood trees. You all can be seated. You see, you can become unmovable. But it's up to you. Let me ask you a question. Have you committed yourself? Have you committed? Listen, I'm not talking about coming up to the altar. Anybody can do that. I'm not talking about going to church. Anybody can go to church. I'm talking about committing yourself and saying, God, I want to go to heaven. God, I want to make my mind up. God, I want a purpose in my heart. God, because you've saved me, I want to know that I know that I know that when I leave this life, I know that I'm going to heaven. You see, you can become unmovable. You don't know my story. You don't know the drugs that I did, the alcohol that I consumed, the life that I lived prior to being saved. And surely if God can save me, he can save you. The Apostle Paul, the one that I'm talking about, God used him. And you know what? God used him to the point. That's the reason you can be saved tonight. He was the forerunner for Christ. And you know what Paul said? That he was the least among everybody. He was the chief of all sinners. But yet God loved him. God kept him. Why? Because he committed himself to Christ. Can I ask you, have you committed yourself to Christ? Have you jumped in and just swam because life around you is broken? Maybe you feel like you're drowning. Can I tell you? Grab hold of the broken pieces because can I tell you tonight? Every person in this building is broken. And there's no way you can be saved except you be broken. The Bible says he comes to those with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. You see, I was broken. Can I tell you tonight that I'm faced with things in my life that I remain broken. But can I tell you, broken is not always bad because I've got good people around me to help me through it. Hey, as we stand tonight, as the singers come, I don't know your heart. But I know this for a fact, that God has spoke to someone's heart. You see, you're broken. You want to be saved, you want to go to heaven, but you're not sure. And you know what? You thought you've committed, but tonight God has revealed to you that you've really not committed yourself. I'm talking about stepping out and saying, God, I want to commit myself to you. On this very day, June 14th, 2021, you can look back through the eons of time and say that night at the NOYC camp, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. Hey, can I tell you, you won't make the local news. The local newspaper, people probably won't know about it. And let's be honest, your friends and family won't know except you tell them. Can I tell you what the Bible says? That the angels of heaven rejoice over one sinner that repents. As you bow your heads with me before they sing... If you're here tonight, would you please be honest with me? But more importantly, would you be honest with God? Would you please slip up your hand if you have never committed yourself to Jesus Christ? I just want to pray for you. That's it. Raise your hand so I can see it. Please, everyone look. No one looking around. God bless those hands. God sees all of those hands. God bless you. God bless you and God bless you and God bless you. As every head is bowed, please bow your heads with me tonight. You've never committed yourself. Can I tell you this? If you'll take that first step right now, 
and commit yourself, Jesus Christ will save you. Maybe you're here tonight and you've walked away from the Lord. You've grown cold. You're not where you need to be. You've stopped committing yourself. Can you raise your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. Would you please pray, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Hands all over the building tonight. You know what God's waiting on? I want you to look up here. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He says, If any man, any woman, any boy or girl, hear my voice, he said, I will come in and sup with them and he with me. Here's the deal. The doorknob is on your side. You have to open the door and let Jesus in. As they sing tonight, if I could get some preachers up here, because I know there's going to be some that's come. If you're not saved, I want you to grab one of these preachers by the hand and say, I don't know the Lord, but I want to be saved. Would you please pray with me? If you're here lost, there's preachers all up here. Come here, boys. Spread out over here. Right as if you don't know the Lord this Come right now Tell him your name Listen Tell him you want to give your heart to Jesus Christ the There's one there Somebody else Come on Christians please pray If you don't know the Lord come Commit yourself tonight Can you do that When I feel like I can't go those of you that raised your hand, what are you waiting for? Come on, right now. Make that commitment. Swim. Make your way to the altar tonight. Preacher, I can't go by myself. Grab somebody beside you and say, will you go pray with me? Come right now. Come. Come on. Right now. Come on. Feel like a sinner. Sins have been washed clean. An absolute beginner. Some coming, how about you? Has never seen. And I must be forgiven. For sometimes asking why I was chosen to There was hands here, 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 and here. What are you waiting for? The hardest part you've already done. You've admitted you're lost. Some's coming right now. How about you? Come on. Hey, let me take it a step further. If you have a friend here tonight that doesn't know Jesus, you need to be up here on the altar praying for them right now. Won't you come? Won't you come? Between what I am and who I want to be, you deliver. When I feel like I can't go on, you deliver me. Come on. And when the road is wide, come on. What are you waiting on?
Not one time have I cried out, and my voice he has not heard, never failed me. Oh, he won't start today, he will make a way. you feel oh your troubles they are real and i know you think that god's forsaken you but child don't lose your faith he is working while you wait so just hold on Not one time have I cried out, and my voice he has not heard, never failed me. He won't start today, he will make a way. He's never failed me, he's been faithful. So faithful, so I choose to trust him now, he will make a way somehow. Hey adults, this means Just you too. You need to come and pray. You got children lost, you need to be praying for them tonight. Grandchildren, you need to be praying. God knows in a mighty way to Now one time I cried out Won't you come? my voice he has not heard Never failed me Oh, he won't start today He will make a way He's never failed me Not one time have I cried out, and my voice he has not heard, never failed me. He won't start today, for he will make a way. How about you? You know, that's the biggest problem that we face in, wor in this world today is commitment. I promise you, though, if you'll commit to Jesus, he'll commit to you. I promise you that he said he would never leave us. Man, we can face the storms. <laughs> How about you? How about you? <laughs> Hey, you know what they're doing in heaven? Amen. What you're doing? <laughs> Take the to rise, and Lord, without me, you can give the dead new life. Lord, without me. You can make the blind to see, and you can tell the mountains to be cast into the sea. But Lord, without you, I am nothing on my own. I'm just earthly flesh and bone, coming before your throne. 
And Lord, if I have you, then I'm a child of the King. I'm an heir to, to the throne. You can do if you're lost, anything, you don't have to leave that way. but I'm nothing without The Lord's you. dealing with your heart. You ought to come right now. Give your heart to the Lord. Lord, you don't need my hands to make the lame to walk. And you don't need my touch to make the dumb to talk, Lord. And you don't need my words to give hope to the lost. It's because you are the one, you're the one who paid the cost. And Lord, without you, I am nothing on my own. I'm just earthly flesh and bones coming before your throne. And Lord, if I you, then I'm a child of the King. I'm an heir to the throne. You can do anything, but I'm nothing without you. But I'm nothing without you. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. If I could ask for a show of hands, how many of you uh, tonight uh, were saved but weren't living where you needed to be and you got that taken care of tonight? Now, now you're all right with the Lord. How many? Raise your hand. Yeah, keep them up. Now, how many of you for the first time Tonight, you have never been saved before the first time tonight you came to the altar and you gave your heart to the Lord. Raise your hand. If you got saved, you ought to be ashamed of it. Raise your hands if you got saved tonight. It's a little I can't see their hands. <laughs> can't see their fat up here. Give the Lord a hand. Yeah. yeah. All of, you, all of you that got saved tonight, we'd like you to come up here. Brother Miguel, raise your hand. Come see Brother Miguel. He has some things he'd like to give you. Uh, make sure everything's right. If some of the ones that got saved are little, if some of you would help them, if you come with them, the you guys that are with them, uh, that they could uh, get that taken care of before they leave. Uh, just say this to all of you that didn't get saved tonight, you don't have to leave that way. Uh, it's never too late to get saved. and uh, You can get saved tonight. You can get saved after service is over. You come to any of us, we'd be glad to pray with you. Uh, but we don't want anyone to leave here without the Lord. So I'm going to uh, let Josh close us out tonight. Thank the Lord for what he did. All right, y'all can take a seat real fast. 